Okay, guys, this episode, um, I, I talked to my prof my professor in jiu-jitsu, uh, Tequino, Augusto Tequino Mendez. He, he's literally one of the best jiu-jitsu guys out there ever. I mean, you can ask anyone who knows about jiu-jitsu, and they'll know who Tequino is. Uh, he's been training jiu-jitsu for, like, just training jiu-jitsu for, like, 25 years. He's a true, true master of the sport. I've never met any anyone who is, like, that big of a just like master of their sport so hearing him talk about um tactics and talk about his career and talk about gi versus no gi um and if training in the gi benefits your no gi and benefits your fighting and stuff we ask him some really good questions and about how he comes back how he came back after a neck surgery at 30 years old he won the adcc championships when he was 36 um which is super impressive but i'll if you like jujitsu, if you enjoy grappling, and even if you don't, this is a pretty interesting podcast coming from uh, Takino, a, a legend of the sport of jujitsu. So, hope you guys enjoy. And if you enjoy, like and subscribe. Uh, thanks so much. Love y'all. We're rolling. Okay, episode uh, forty-seven. Almost didn't want to fucking come in today, dude. My teeth are aching so incredibly bad. I don't know if they're going to tighten up, but teeth pain and the nerves in your teeth and your face, that's got to be up there with some of the worst pain. Well, 100%. But uh, I'm he well, we're here today with my professor of jiu-jitsu, my friend and coach for probably coming up almost eight years now yeah. uh, that we've known each other, uh, Augusto Tequino Mendez, um, one of the best jiu-jitsu guys to ever do it. I mean, first place in ADCC in 2019 in a stacked fucking division and then first place in the IBJJF World Championships 2013 adult in the gi and then first place in the World Championships in the no gi 2012-2015 I mean I mean the list just keeps going on and on and on and you rarely see people that win championships in no gi and then win championships in the gi and then win the ADCC championships which is a whole completely different rule set yeah. how i kind of met i mean how i kind of got obsessed with jujitsu is because it, coming up jujitsu in america or the the programs i was around it was just kind of yeah you come in do some triangles arm bars you don't really but then going to train with uh you at the competition training over at ishmael's back in the day i'd watch you guys grown men sit there and talk about a technique for half an hour and then train for real train hard and then seeing you being 150 160 pounds going against the black belts that are over 200 pounds i was like holy shit dude, like he's a real fucking master of the sport and not avoiding those guys because they're so big and so strong but every day going with every single one in the room and beating everyone i was like oh my god so i really wanted to like learn from you and learn real brazilian jiu-jitsu yeah and and go through your program kind of that you took me through uh kind of a a more would you say traditional style class where you do your drilling do your warm-ups and then do our live rollings so going through that with you learning how to run and structure a class has really helped my gym like like take yeah. off for sure yeah i mean i think uh a lot of people want to train jiu-jitsu but they i mean what what they don't know how to do it they have a, a bad experience in all the place you know and and um I mean, like I'm more old school. That's the way they're learning to, you know, and and that's what uh, the Brazilians do back in Brazil. We, we we just go hard every single time, and 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 after, like you said, it's just disgusting and 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 trying to make everybody better. You know, mm -hmm. it's an individual sport, but talking and making the your partner better, eventually, it's gonna make you better. You know yeah. What I mean? So that's that's kind of philosophy that we we always pushing. Since, since I was like a white belt, you know, 
Yeah, and every time I've went with you for the past seven, eight years, after almost every round, you're always helping me with something, saying, hey, you're doing wrong here. Hey, you made the wrong decision here. And, like, it's helped my jiu-jitsu just get so good, and I'm super thankful yeah. for it. And if, if you remember, I mean, back on that time when you started training there, and you bring Sean that training to us, and, and Sean was not, like, stronger. He was, like, still a kid, super mm -hmm. skinny. And uh, and back in the time, he was not a great jujitsu training mm -hmm. for me, you know. But but now he's he's amazing. Yeah, you know what I mean. But exactly because that mentality, you know, like we mm -hmm. were like a pushing. Even you, you were stronger. You, you were already like giving me training back at the time. Mm -hmm. But now he's I mean the best, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just just making you guys getting better through the years. Mm -hmm. In the end, come back to me. To you know, to, to help me to to keep improving and and changing my game and improving my game. Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing I think most a lot of Americans, I mean a lot of gyms too. They they kind of think, oh yeah, the gi is kind of slow. You start from your knees. You start from your guard. I'm like, when I went over with you guys, we're starting from the feet and we're going mm -hmm. ten minute rounds. Yeah. And you got guys fucking judo throwing you hard as fuck and just like breaking grips and going full speed competition yeah. training. That's when I was like, holy shit. This gi sport is way different than I thought, and it's fucking awesome. Yeah, I mean, that was the competition train, you know, and uh, that that's what I always try to push everybody around me to understand. We should perform in the training room the same way that you're gonna try to perform on the competition, you know. No way that you, you go easy in the training, saving. I mean, of course, if having injuries, that's understandable, but you save yourself there, will avoid the good trainings. And then when you go to the competition, I mean, you're not ready, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that's what we're trying to to do in the in the training room, trying to go as hard as you can, you know what I mean, and, and, and improving. It, you said it was like that. You kind of learned that even when you started jujitsu when you were 14. So you've been doing jujitsu now for what 25, 20, 25 years. Uh, yeah, I think so. I started in 1996, so 96. Oh, tw so 26 years almost. Almost, yeah. It was, and even back then they were training like that because it's always interesting to me like only six americans have won an adult black belt world title in the gi i mean yeah. and it's been going on for a while and only six americans so the brazilians yeah. have had it down and training for a while oh yeah i mean i think the number is going to keep coming up mm -hmm. because uh, i mean a lot of guys are here now and training here learning from here so in the next 10 years, you're going to have a new generation that will start training now and, and you're going to become a, a black belt world champion, American black belt world champions. But, but I, I think they need to go through that. You know I mean? They need to learn in that. And, and there's a time you, ca you can't skip that time. You, know what I mean? you can't start training harder now and a year later you're gonna you're gonna become a world champion as mm -hmm. a black belt that's impossible no you need to go through the whole year's experience in training partners drilling and then you might have a chance so mm -hmm. the number is coming up but i mean and i think it's gonna do even more um well now that so many like former brazilian world champions have schools in america yeah. now younger kids are going to join that are american and they're going to build them up but even so what would you say because being a part of your adcc camp where you won you didn't really do a lot of drilling so what are kind of your thoughts on drilling versus going live how much should that be separated and when should you focus on almost going live more yep yeah, uh, i mean i did drill a little bit but my drillings normally I do through my class. You know, what I mean, when I was teaching class, I was just getting someone there, and then it was just drilling some. Not harder for me it was more to 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 make my my brain understanding and, and have good habits and creating kind of good methods to to what I could be facing. Mm -hmm. I was studying a lot and then I was drilling that during my class. When the competition time class I was not I mean that's a go time you know it was mm -hmm. not like okay I'm not gonna spend 30 minutes now drilling something to see if it works or not mm -hmm. I'm gonna study home videos watch everybody I'm gonna possible fight get back to the gym get someone which a similar game tell them exactly what I want them to do and but not not even like a, um, a full speed is like 30 40 percent mm -hmm. just to to I can see what 
uh, in slowly uh, motion what he the person might try to do and try to create some kind of a defense or attacking or mm -hmm. try to take advantage of the situation mm -hmm. so it's, it's i mean but it's I, that's one thing that you don't need to do a lot you know what i mean like i said i study and then but you don't know who you're gonna facing yeah. so in the end i have 15 guys there mm -hmm. and they could study for two three and then i never face in there and then in the adcc the big one it's not you don't get seated or do you get seated you, you get seated and it's yeah. random though no no it's not random it's, okay. it's, it's um, um made up bracket by hand mm -hmm. so they they sit the first ones based on the previous uh, championships and mm -hmm. and uh, how they did in the trials, which mm -hmm. trial they wins or not, they consider it like the American trials and Brazilian trials the hardest mm -hmm. ones. So and uh, and former uh, events, how they did in the former event. Oh. If they are teammates or if you're not teammates, because ATC they are, they don't allow you to fight uh, in different sides of the bracket. That was put so, you together right off the yeah, rip. Yeah, you, you need to be on the second round. Second round, you're going to face your teammates, you know. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah, so in Brazil, in Brazil, jiu-jitsu, it's a lot like wrestling here, I, I would think. Because mm -hmm. wrestling here, you a lot of places, you can wrestle in elementary school. And almost every normal high school has a wrestling program. Is there jiu-jitsu in schools? or No, not in Brazil. Not in Brazil. I mean, the people who are training jiu-jitsu, they go to some jiu-jitsu academy club. And then they pay outside to do jujitsu. It's not like here uh, in your high schools. Or, yeah. I mean, it's, but it's super. I mean, most kids know what jujitsu is. There is it yeah, popular it's, there? It's really popular. Yeah. I mean that that was always popular, especially in Rio. That's where it came from because the Graces, mm -hmm. the Graces, they they were from Belém, but they were moving to Rio like for a long time. So Ilio Grace, the first one. He, he made that famous in 19, I don't know, 40, what, 45, I don't know, mm -hmm. something like that. And then that started to explode. And through the years, they go through cycles. Sometimes it was like really popular. And sometimes something happened and then kind of slowed down a little mm -hmm. bit. And, uh, and then when the UFC started in 93, 93, mm -hmm. and the Hoist Gracie went there and, and he won representing jiu-jitsu kind of give you another boom, boom for huh? the sport you know damn that's pretty badass so uh because you so how old are you when you won won this last adcc 36 i was 36 that's fucking awesome i was the oldest on the bracket for sure <laughs> yeah which is fucking crazy yeah. we'll just go through that that the the camp of it alone because we were doing six seven ten minute rounds sometimes eight ten minute rounds monday yeah. wednesday and friday yeah full speed yeah yeah how, how did you in your mind kind of just form that did you just kind of make it up like okay if i train three days live and then the other two days maybe do runs did you just kind of make up that camp in your no. brain by yourself yeah i i structured the the camp in my mind but i was actually going live every day I mean, I was going Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I was doing the the training, competition training in my mm -hmm. academy that you guys were going there. And and on those days are the days that are doing uh, lift weights. You know what I mean? Strength condition, but lifting heavy mm -hmm. weights. And Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was doing um, cardio. I was doing like the, the sprints, all the cardio in the morning. Yeah, hard jerks. Hard jerks. Like, yeah, really hard. No, really, like 30, 35 minutes, like really hard sprints. Mm -hmm. And in the afternoon, I was going live with the Masu. So Tuesday and Thursday, I was with Masu. That's right. It just me and Masu, just us, you know, and, and Masu and Andrea, which was already heavier than me mm -hmm. and, and bigger, but it was, was a, a high level black belt. And, he, and, and training with him one, the day we did that three man group, he brings the intensity too. Oh, yeah. He brings the intensity. He'll yell at you if you're not like doing something. And, so that that probably gave you a big confidence boost going the rounds with yeah. him also. And that, that's what I was trying to do. I mean, I tried to to have a hard rounds every day, you know, and and have you guys push me and and losing weight at the same time and same time seeing my performance in the training with everybody, with mass. So I mean, just just getting better and better. I mean, boost my confidence like mm -hmm. to to the sky. You know, I went that to the tournament really confident, really mm -hmm. confident. Just because your training was just so hard. Yeah. So what, out of all the rule sets, what would you say your favorite rule set is? 
at an IBGGF, ADCC, um, I mean, like the fight to win. What's your favorite rule set, would you say? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a fan of the IBGGF, you mm -hmm. know, maybe because that was the, 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 the format that it competing more through the years, you know. Um, ADCC, I like the idea, but it like, took me a little bit time to understand the rules mm -hmm. well, especially because they, they kind of, since that they change all the time, so it's hard to understand what the referee was saying or, or, mm -hmm. or pointing. So kind of for years, I went that competing, don't have a clue to what is going to happen, you know, just like a fucker go yeah. and compete and whatever happened, happened. Mm -hmm. For this year that I won, I spent the time studying the rules, asking a lot, bunch of questions to Mo before, you know, uh, and also my experience on the previous events, helping me to understand more the rules. But IBJJF, um, that's something that i done since I was 15 years old, started competing there. Mm -hmm. I did the referee's course. I refereed for like over 10 years in the, the biggest event, so kind of I understand the rules really, really well. and. And I was one of the, the guys who take more the most advantage of the rules. Mm -hmm. So that's that that's made the, make me like really comfortable competing there, you know, mm -hmm. in gear or no gear, whatever it is. So I was really like confident. Yeah. So make so, make me like more. So what would if there was one thing you could change about the IBJJF rules, what would what would it be? Uh I think now for black belts, the time is too long. The 10 minutes match is sometimes is boring. You know, if he's not yeah. on the sport, sitting to watch a 10 minutes match, sometimes it's brutal. You know? Because a lot of guys, 10 minute match, so they wait for the last two minutes to score or last minute to get advantage. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of strategy there. Nobody wants to lose him, especially in the big events. Mm -hmm. So you get that 10 minutes match, potential great match. They go there and don't 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 really fight. They kind of holding holding forever, and then for eight minutes, it's really boring. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I went to the wards and now, our uh, two three weeks ago, the black belt days. I just went there and I mean I saw a bunch of great mats, but I, I watched a bunch of like bullshit match. Just mm -hmm. like where they're sitting in 50 50, they're really just yeah. waiting for the time to go. You couldn't see, I mean, you couldn't see. I mean, they, they all competing for a long time, so they know when the ref's gonna penalty you or not, and mm -hmm. they do enough to not get penalties. But uh, you could see they, they were just waiting, waiting for the right moments to score last or, or yeah, I mean, to to end up winning, you know. So, and sometimes it sucks, you know. Yeah, and then and then it goes to, I mean, no one scores or no one gets an advantage, and then it goes to a ref's decision. I wonder what kind of things they could implement to, for an overtime, where it's like an well, overtime, let's go, I but mean, then it'd be hard. Yeah, I don't think, it's, because it's a big event, you know what I mean, a lot of match, I don't think over the time would help. Um, I saw some some events kind of playing that uh, who score last wins, mm -hmm. so that we never goes to, to decisions, um, advantages or, or or points, but um, I mean I don't know I I, I think if they put put the the time a little shorter, six minutes for, uh, six minutes I think is good. Yeah, six minutes uh, a little bit more restricted to the penalties, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I did one super fight. I don't remember where I did one super fight that. It, they were doing like 10 seconds penalty. So you just could stall for 10 seconds. And now penalty. Or they penalty. So mm. kind of making it more dynamic. You really have to go. But mm -hmm. I don't remember where, where I did that. Mm. So, so when you were, uh, so you so you go through all this, all, all these tournaments, you're like pretty established already. And then at 30 years old, you what happened in your neck? You bulge a disc in your neck? Yeah, I have a um, hernia that... Uh, yeah, herniated disc at 30 years old so it's like fuck so were you contemplating kind of what you're going to do with your like yeah. jiu jitsu I career mean, and fighting career and stuff or you're just like fuck I don't even the doctor told me that I was not going to be able to train anymore he Dang. came to me and said man like you, you're done That's, with that surgery you're not going to be able to train anymore and that was exactly when we started to, to have my, my peak mm -hmm. I started. I just won the, the pro world professional in Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. I I just beat half a Mendes, which was the current world champion. I said, "Fuck, man! I can't believe it." Oh, so you you beat Hafa for the world championship before? 
in the in the World Pro in Abu okay, Dhabi. World Pro. World Pro in Abu Dhabi. And then that was in April. Mm-hmm. And then we fought again the final of the IBJJF in June and he beat me. Mm-hmm. And then the end of the year, that's when I got the surgery. Mm-hmm. You know, I got hurt and had the surgery. So, but I, I mean, in my mind, I was just thinking, man, like, fuck, man, it took me so long. A lot of training, a lot of hard work to get now on that level. And then, I mean, I can't continue, you know? So mm-hmm. it was like kind of heartbreak a little bit. Took took me a bunch of time to... So did when you got the surgery, were you depressed at all? Or I was you, a little bit. I was a little and bit. And did you gain weight? And were you just like, fuck? I gained weight. I gained kind of, I mean, almost 15, 20 pounds in the mm-hmm. beginning. And then I lose it after that. But I lost, I mean, my weight was kind of the same, but I, I could see because I lost a lot of weight because of my, my, my muscles, my chest, my back, bicep, tries for kind of atrophy. So yeah. I lost a lot of weight on that, but I gained like on the belly and the, mm-hmm. on the legs. My weight was kind of the same, but I, but I knew it was, and then was you out were, of shape. Then you were able, so what was the recovery? Uh, was like a recovery a year or six months where, where you were able to get on the mats and be like, oh, I can maybe drill a little bit. How long now, did that and, take? And that, that's happened exactly when it was moving to the United States. Mm-hmm. So I got the surgery in November 2011. Mm-hmm. In December, I moved to the United States. And then I, I, I got here without knowing if I was going to be able to train anymore. Uh, I was hopeful that I'd be able to teach. Mm-hmm. Because I was feeling that I could. I mean, of then course. make a living. Yeah, make a living yeah. teaching. And um, and then for months, I was just going to the training, watching. I couldn't do nothing. But it, little by little, I started to feel better. And I kept the contact with my doctor in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And I was just bugging him. I said, man, like, I feel that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm great. I mean, my muscles went back. I'm, I'm, I feel good. So he passed me a bunch of exams to do here. So I didn't have insurance now, so I pay a bunch of money just to do mm-hmm. the exams. And then he came back to me and said, man, like, um, I, I think you can try real light. So, and that was April. So five, five months after the surgery, April, I did my first training real light. Mm-hmm. And, and that felt great. Just on top. Just being able to get on the mats again. Yeah. I mean, I was getting the mat, but just watching and and. Kind of make it more depression, depressing, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because it, I mean, you see everybody doing the training, good training, mm-hmm. and and it was I couldn't do it. You know? So it was it was it was a good feeling to get back in the mat. Yeah, and, and then do what you did after that surgery yeah. at thirty years old already. Come yeah. back, win worlds again, get in the UFC, training hard at the lab. I mean, when you were winning some of these tournaments too, you're training MMA full time also. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think well, that was kind of shift that I had in my mind after a while. When, like I said, I was, I was a little bit depressed at home, just thinking, oh, man, I'm not competing anymore. I was in a really high level black belt, but now, I mean, everybody's training, getting better, and he's sitting without training. And you're starting at ground zero when it comes to cardio. And exactly. Everything. And then, like I said, something shifted in my mind. I said, man, you know what? I, I think I was supposed to go through that, you know what I mean? I need to learn somehow. I mean, God maybe is trying to, to make me understand something that I don't know yet. Mm-hmm. I need to go through that, recompose myself, and, and get strong mentally to face whatever I need to face. Mm-hmm. You know I mean, if, if it is me to be to keep continue, that's going to happen. And then start to focus on, on that. In my mind, I always had the, the goal that I'm going to win the world championship. And I said, I'm going to win the world championship. I, I mean, I don't mind. To wait one more year, boy, and get there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in my best shape ever. Mm-hmm. And and I kind of did that, you know. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. Super impressive. So, what would you say? Um, c- competing for years, being an expert in just competition. I mean, tactically and everything. What, in your opinion, is like Sugar's biggest strengths? I mean, yeah, people. Are, don't know how good sugar is on the ground you know mm-hmm. i mean and i understand in his fight he just knocked people out you know and mm-hmm. but i i think he's his strength is he's kind of a little bit uh how to say like um unpredictable in some stuff mm-hmm. so he, you kind of he can't attack you for a lot of positions so you don't know what's coming mm-hmm. and uh and 
you don't know his style, he, he's gonna surprise you, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and and seeing that he's he's willing to put the work to to get better, and not not just now that he's, I mean, finding a top ten. I mean, since he was an amateur, you know, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's understanding the the importance of jujitsu, the same way that he, he was doing the strike and and yeah, make make it harder to anyone know what's gonna happen. Yeah, and he's just so good at too in these these heavy pressure moments, and it obviously oh. probably comes from hard work and the confidence he gets from his hard work, but staying calm and when the lights turn on, he's super. He's yeah, a gamer. Yeah, he, he's man, he's completely different. I mean, I see a lot of guys. I've been around a lot, a lot of great fighters. When it was up in terms of a go time, mm-hmm. and he's one of the best for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, just being around him during the fight week, watching the way that he like handle himself, media, all the fans, every time it's getting bigger and bigger, you know, and mm-hmm. and he's still getting there. All the pressure, all the trash talk, people go mm-hmm. choosing him, uh, like trying. Cheering to him to lose, and and he goes there and perform the way that he he does. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's it's weird because some of the some of the, he'll send me some clips from sparring to rewatch and stuff, and he'll he'll send me these clips. I'm like, oh, you fainted your right hand to set up the sweep, and he doesn't even know he fainted his right hand. He's just yeah. such a natural athlete. He's setting these up <laughs> guys up and tricking them. He doesn't even kind of know what he's doing. He's just letting his athleticism take over. Yeah, it's yeah. been super impressive to me too watching the way. The way he just it shows up. Yeah, yeah. He shows up every time. Mentally, he's super strong. I never, I mean, I never seen him complain. He he barely complain anything. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. training in, in when is the, the fight week there? I mean, you, you can see he's ready. You know, and and kind of pump us too. You know what I mean? Like I'm kind of yeah. like, oh fuck. Let's, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. So. uh we got let's do let's make a couple fight picks for coming up here. Calvin Cater versus Josh Emmett. Damn, that's a sweet yeah. fight. Josh Emmett's so fucking explosive. He throws those heaters. Calvin Cater, I mean, I didn't know how Calvin Cater was gonna come back after Max Holloway just I mean, fucked him up. He beat yeah. him up so bad. I was like, damn, I wonder if he's gonna be hurt mentally at all from that. But then he came back and he looked great. Yeah. So And he but, fought like a, a Giga, right? Yeah. So he looked good in that one. Yeah, he looks so good and tough. So I'm going to probably pick... God, I like Josh Emmett. Calvin Cater's got a little height on him. I, I go mean, Cater. I go. I'll go. i probably pick Cater, too, in, since it's five rounds. But Josh Emmett could end him with one. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we got Donald Cowboy Cerrone versus Joe Lozon. I mean, you never can tell with Donald, Tom. Huh? Yeah, I mean... You just never can tell. But these kind of fights, I feel like he shines in. Yeah, I, I think that's fight for him. I mean, it was yeah. made for him to, to win and have a good performance. So I'll probably go with Cowboy, Cowboy in that yeah. fight. And then Tim Means, Kevin Holland. That's an interesting fight. Kevin Holland was supposed to come on the podcast and come train with us a little bit, but he ended up not making it. But Tim Means is a fucking yeah. beast. And not a ton of people know about Tim Means, but he's an animal. He is, yeah. He's big. He can grapple. He's just gritty. He comes forward. Um, so I'm going to probably pick Tim Means against Kevin Holland. Yeah, I don't know about that one, too. I mean, it's, yeah, I'm not, probably Tim. I, I'll go Tim just for the experience, mm-hmm. you know. He's and then the big one, the big card we'll go over is uh, Volkanovski versus Max Holloway. I don't know. I have a feeling that Max is going to gonna get really? that done this time. I don't know. Damn. I mean, I I think he's getting better to Volkanovski every single time. I mean, he's he's the champ. He's not losing. He's coming to a great uh, winning streak. But like I said, my my guess would be, I mean, if Max don't do now, he's not gonna do anymore. You know. So yeah. I think he's gonna go then and and just pull the trigger and and try to win. So. Yeah, that's going to be a crazy one. Israel versus Jared. We've been watching Jared get ready. And Jared, I mean, if there's anyone to do it, it would yeah. be Jared and the mindset he has. And he's super, I mean, he's physically gifted in a lot of ways. He hits fucking hard. He hits like he weighs 300 pounds still. He just needed one, man. One punch that landed yeah. and, and one kick changes everything, you know. And we've seen the history happening a bunch of times. Yeah. I mean, we were there when Amanda Nunes lost to, to Juliana Penny. 
Yep. And nobody was going to say that Juliana was going to beat Amanda, and, and that happened. Yeah. And then people can't count Jerry out, for yeah. sure. I mean, he might go there and, and have a great performance and, mm -hmm. and, and, and beat Izzy, you know? That's what I was telling Sean, too. You see, you see these champions that are champions for a long time. Mm -hmm. Like, how much does their training camp start to change? Do they start taking things away? They start, they start to get a little bit older, and then you got these hungry people waiting yeah. to get this title shot, doing everything. Like Shevchenko, you see her kind of not look the best, and then Amanda Nunes get burnt out and then yeah. just get whooped on. So, so. I, I think Shevchenko lost that match. Who? Uh, oh, yeah. I think she lost for, I mean, she won by on the judges, yeah. but I mean, in the end, I thought she lost. Yeah, I mean, the headbutt saved her. Yeah, for sure. She closed up that girl's left. I mean, that girl's eye. Shevchenko southpaw, so she started blasting that side. That yeah. definitely saved her. Yeah, which is crazy. And then we got uh, Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland versus five and one Alex Pereira, who's beat Israel before in kickboxing. Mm. He's only five and one, and I heard that the winner of that is going to get a title shot. Well, oh. I. I, I go to the Brazilian Alex Pereira just just because, I mean he's high high level striker and uh, Sean I mean sees that uh, he likes to strike too, mm -hmm. I mean I don't see nothing special in him that I watch and he say oh man mm -hmm. this guy is amazing you know what I mean he's really durable strong, I mean come forward but sometimes he sees that are more, I mean he's he wants to do the things then he's kind of thinking you mm -hmm. know what I mean so. Yeah, I mean, he's not like a super gifted athlete yeah. or anything, but he is definitely a tough motherfucker. That's going to yeah. be a sweet fight because he comes forward, he strikes, he's, yeah. he talks a lot. I enjoy watching him. I, I think Alex has more tools to, to finish. And then Lauren Murphy versus Misha Tate. I guess Lauren uh, is doing her fight camp in Denver this mm. time, so she moved away from Texas. You know why or not? I guess I guess the camp with uh, Shevchenko it just didn't go good. Everything mm. I don't know if it was with coaches, partners, and a bunch yeah. of stuff. So she went and trained in Denver, and Joe said she really liked it. So she's doing her fight camp there yeah. against Misha Tate. So that'll be a good fight. Yeah, I mean, I I think Laura has a big chance to win. You know, what I mean, we yeah. seen a lot of training before, and uh, and I grappled to her a lot before too. You know, and and she's super strong. It's hard mm -hmm. hard to take her take her down. Um, she has good jiu-jitsu, good positionment, and 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 Misha, she's gonna try to to do jiu-jitsu. Her strike is not good. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, great to to over striking yeah. Lauren. So I think she's gonna try to grab Lauren and wrestle her. Wrestle her, and as long as Lauren shape and and not getting tired, mm -hmm. I don't see how she's gonna lose. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then uh, if you had to bet on it right now, $1,000, the outcome of the Sean versus Pedro fight. I, I think it's a really good test for Sean. I think, I think it was about time to, to fight someone mm -hmm. like that. Um, I, I truly believe Sean can, can finish the fight. Um, but I don't know when. I don't know if it's going to be first round, second mm -hmm. round, third round. But I, I think he can finish the fight. Um, and knowing the way that he performs, the way that he shows up there, and um, I'm just hoping to to until the fight don't have any injuries, keep mm -hmm. no injuries, injuries free, uh, weight cuts goes smooth as possible, and and show up to the fight. You know, I I think he's gonna finish. I would say maybe second, third, mm -hmm. giving the first to Pedro kind of <laughs> understand a little bit what is going on. Yeah, but um, but yeah. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, Pedro is gonna come forward. I mean, he he. He'll probably try to hit Sean in the body. Of course, he's going to try to calf kick him. We know he's going to try to calf kick him. He's got a big left hook and a big right hook. So he's got limited weapons against a, a tall, lanky kid with a lot of weapons. Yeah. It, I mean, Pedro's short, too. You know, I mean, he's not long. Mm -hmm. Sean's really long. I mean, amazing footwork. So I don't see how he's going to get that close without getting hit. Yeah. And the way that Sean's hit is. Is the end, and, and that's the thing. Pedro is the type of guy. Is he going to come out and take a risk? Because with Sean, you're going to have to take a risk. Yeah. You're going to have to take a risk, but then comes with taking a risk, possibly getting KO'd. So I guess we're going to see. I mean, he's from American Top Team. He's going to have really oh, good yeah. coaches. He's going to have a great camp. He, yeah, he he's going to come in shape. Camp. Yeah, he's going to come in shape. And and I mean, I know a lot of the guys that are training there with him, and I know he's going to be prepare you know mm -hmm. and i don't think you would take the fight if he's not 
getting there 100 percent. thinking he's gonna win yeah 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 I but i just so think the matchup's not it's not great for him I mean, yeah but the height difference i mean the where they're at in their career difference and I, I mean, you watch some of pedro's fight he fought this justin scoggins kid that was pretty tall but you haven't really seen him against tall people and it's hard to mimic sean striking you have people try to mimic oh. his striking and you can get away with getting in their face and you can get away with pinning them but then you do it against sean and it's like yeah, he's, sean's unique you know like yeah. he, he, you can't mimic him he's harder you know yeah. I mean? like you can put people to do some of this stuff but his arsenal is so big so many different angles and, and and punching kicks and stance, man, it's, it's hard. It's unique. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's really hard to to find people to do what he does. Yeah. So that's why I mean I don't see Pedro. I mean I I see he's getting confused in the fight, not understanding what's going on. I mean trying to stick to his game plan, but at the same time you're gonna try to change it because it's not working. Yeah. And and the opener is gonna be there, and, mm. and and he's gonna go out. You know. So that's what I feel. Yeah, I, I feel that way too. I feel, I I feel truly in my heart that he'll be able to finish him. But we're really trying to prepare him for fifteen minutes, a fucking oh, yeah. gritty war. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe something go, you break break something. Who knows yeah. what happens? But going through the adversity, ready for fifteen minutes, and he and he is. He already is ready for yeah, fifteen minutes right now. That's the part that we know he's gonna do. You know what I mean? Like he's mentally strong enough to whatever happened there, knock him out in ten seconds or go the whole war 15 minutes mm -hmm. sean's gonna be there and he's gonna yeah. do that so that's one thing he it, it hit one of his um his strengths too is in those big moments you hurt someone and the whole crowd erupts and everyone erupts and this moment you almost finish this guy's almost here so people a lot of people empty their tank and they go crazy trying to finish it but he's so good and we've worked on it for a lot of years at cracking the kid bink dropping them and just staying completely composed. Yeah. I'm going to drop this guy over and over and over and over instead of being like, this is my yeah. time. And then blah, 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 Don't the let tank. the emotions taking over the, the moment there. He's so, good. He's good about that. Yeah. Really good. Um, and then we got Brian Barberino versus Robbie Lawler. What a fucking Whoa. sweet fight. I mean, Brian's got to be one of my top three, maybe favorite fighters to watch every single fight. He's I always in. bring the fight. In, just, I love it. I love Brian. Lawler, dude. Man, he's, he, I don't know, man. He, bite the mouth mouthpiece and goes you know yeah. fuck. and rob Lawler is no joke too you know I, I think it's gonna be a switch fight i think so too and brian is just not when he, when he was training here he's not super technical like super yeah. savvy but he's just i mean he's got a fucking tough gritty mindset he's gonna come forward and against what a sweet fight for brian at this point is yeah, yeah. Former, champion, former champion too and both southpaws both gonna come forward you won the last one right brian Barbarina? Yeah. He won. It was a fight of the night. Fight of the night, and it was just a crazy yeah. fight. So we're going to pick Brian by decision in that fight. Yeah. Potential fight of the night there. Maybe. Yeah. Depending yep. what. I mean, Brian's going to do it, but let's see what how Rob. Uh, Jim Miller, Bobby Green. Probably Bobby Green. I don't know. Yeah. Punching him up from the outside. It's yeah, hard to that, say on that one. It's hard. I mean, I go with Bob, too. Better boxing. Yeah. I'm, yeah yeah for sure so how many nights a week are you teaching every single night at your academy uh just not fridays so now i, I finally have fridays off oh but, nice but monday to thursday nights i'm there and uh mondays and tuesdays mornings too so would you say it's harder running a business in america compared to if you had a business in brazil uh, it's different it's different you know i think you use we see here in america i mean with time and that the thing is escalating and, and getting better. But uh, at the same time, we don't, we have a lot of uh, problems that we, we, we would not have in Brazil, like the language barriers, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, and some of the problems that are, we don't know how to run business here versus in Brazil, we can talk to a bunch of people who did that and here is pretty much like, well, I don't know. I mean, that works in Brazil, but it's going to work here or not. Yeah. So, it, well, it's nice we have a couple friends that are gym owners, like uh, Kiki or John Crouch, yeah. that we can kind of ask. Exactly. No, I did, but like kind of each one has a different views and, and mm. things that works for them. And the same stuff didn't work for other ones. So you kind of don't know which side you go. Mm -hmm. And and like what I did was, was just trying stuff and... If he was working, continue to do it. If he was not working, stop doing it and, and mm -hmm. changing. And um, I mean, 
I think that slow a little bit the process, especially because I did everything by myself. I never have a help help of anyone. Yeah, which is awesome. You know what I mean? And, and so it take him a little bit of time to 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 making the things going and getting better, and and now it's finally paying off. You know. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. So, what age do you think you'll you'll probably start Theo in Jiu Jitsu? Three or four? Uh, Amanda wants to go three because he has a lot of energy. He doesn't stop. Uh -huh. But I, I I think you go four or five. When they know? start, can they can start? I mean, yeah, understanding. Yeah, bit. right now he, he's two and a half. He's still developing and and showing of what he wants to do. So he start to understand about what he can do, what he cannot. Mm -hmm. And I mean, right now he it is hard to follow instructions, you know. So we putting him, I don't see him t t in six more months when he's gonna be three. He follow instructions on the class, so he's gonna probably make a mess in the class. Yeah, the instructor's gonna be like mad. He's not tr going to say nothing because <laughs> it's me. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. But so I just I, I just want him to have fun and and understanding and. In, Using the jujitsu as a, as a something that are gonna help him in the future. If he's gonna become a fighter or not, I don't know. But mm -hmm. but I, I want to use jujitsu through through the life, you know. So I don't want yeah. to burn him and push him, and try to do it now. Put pressure but, on him and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, you see that a lot too in, in kids jujitsu. Is is like the kids come in and they're. See I the think the, pa the parents are coaching them too much and like putting this pressure on them and then the, and then the kid loses and starts crying and puts his, puts all this yeah. pressure on himself. I know that's that's going to be interesting to go about when I have a kid because I, I definitely I want my kid to kind of be required to do jujitsu. Yeah. Like you're kind of let's yeah. let's do jujitsu. That's part of what we're going to do. Maybe take over the academy one yeah. one day. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. Like. He I think he's gonna be natural. He's coming since like two. He's he's come to my academy since he was three months. You know what I mean? He's two and a half now. Right now he just seen the academy as a playground. That's what he's saying. He's, mm. He he wants to play, jump here and there, throw the balls. But you're gonna get the time that he needs to understand that is the rules there, you know, and, and classic rules and I mean and that's gonna happen. You know, and, and parents sometimes are super annoying. And, yeah, and sometimes they, they, they can making a really good potential good kid stopping later, you know, and just not like it. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of pressure. I was talking to my brother about that now when I saw him in the world. Um, he said he's having some problems with some parents that act exactly like that because the parents is being putting so much pressure in some of the kids, a really good kids, that the kid doesn't want to train anymore. So, like, in that situation, would you just take the parents aside privately and just yeah. kind of talk to them? And yeah, just you say, have to. Yeah. I have to. I mean, you need to understand that it's not helping, you know, and, and I like to always, like, invite them to train and I hoping to them to accept. You know, I, mean? I, I did that a bunch of times. They like, come train for free for, like, a month. That's okay. Just so you understand what what is going on. Yeah, know? especially the parents who don't train. Exactly. No, most of them like nine ninety percent doesn't train. Yeah. I mean, at least for me. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? A bunch of them just go there coaching, basing if they wrestle when they high when they were in high school, whatever yeah. it is, but they don't have an idea what is jujitsu, how hard it is, you know. And and some of them start training, and then they oh man, that's that's ah, really hard. Yeah, yeah. And I understand <laughs> you now, son. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's interesting because I haven't really had a ton of drama in my gym yet. And I know I've been around enough gyms in my life to where it's going to come. Yeah. So just navigating it and handling it correctly, that's going to be Yeah, I, I think too. you just need to always, I mean, step up and, and, and don't wait. Don't wait to, to become something big mm -hmm. because it's going to be a problem. So now we start to educate everyone. I mean, understand the emotions there. You want your kid to win, but... That is a big uh, scenario ahead of that. You know what I mean? Not just win the training. You yeah. know what I mean? He, he's going to learn to win in life. And uh, if you're understanding now about uh, the victory and the defeat, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just win, win, win. You're not going to always win the life. Yeah. You're gonna, we're going to lose. And then they're going to go through that, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so you, get, you hear the question all the time, too, is like, do you think training the gi... Um, training in the gi will help you for fighting or help you even in your no gi game in, in some oh, yeah. ways. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, 
I was never a fan of no gi when it was coming up on the lower belts. I hate it. I mean, I was getting hurt every single time. I was so used to the grips. And then I changed later when I started to do MMA and started to have fun and, and see the importance. And then, but I, I truly believe the Jiu Jitsu the Gi is going to give you all the tools that you need to, to perform Sinogi. You know, you, you have to understand a lot of concepts that uh, you apply in the Gi for the Nogi. You know, and um, I think it's just, I mean, you see maybe once in a while someone just appeared in Nogi doing really well, but the history shows that, uh, I mean, most of the champions came in from the Gi, you know. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. How many, how many ADCC champions are there that haven't trained in a gi? I, mean, I think maybe Gordon. Yeah, maybe Gordon. Oh, but that's I mean, about I, it. I, right? I heard that like he trains with gi too. You know, I mean he's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I mean he's just not putting the same effort that he does in no gi and gi. But but I believe he did gi for a while. You know, what I mean, in some moment in his life, he decided okay. I'm stopping now. Maybe a purple belt or blue belt. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me just focus more. No gi. But he did a gi. He probably got enough to to keep going. And and, and yeah. But see, I, I think I think the same. I think that just the more you're on the mats, whether it's in the gi or no gi, the more you just start to understand the the different positions. Mm -hmm. And then even in the gi, like the grip strength. When you're really in in shape in the gi, you, your grips are fucking. Oh strong and then for us the the 10 minute competition rounds those really helped me be like i'm not i, I can't think about the time because it, it'll just be and forever. i remember that like right in the beginning when you you start training i remember you coming to me saying man like fuck 10 minutes too long i can't mentally maintain yeah my concentration and mm -hmm. i said man that that's the challenge you know mm -hmm. if you can 10 minutes each round focus on on that don't let in nothing outside or or Whatever it is, just you and the person, the grips, and then mm -hmm. if you can focus on that for ten minutes without losing concentration, man. Yeah, and that's it's it, different. It definitely like that turned out to be just my my favorite things ever. Being in that moment in the ten minute match, thinking about the advantages, thinking about when to give yeah. up the points, not to give up the points, how kind of how much time's left, and being just so tactical. Winning a world championship in the gi, I mean, is fucking insane. You oh, got to be super, super skilled. And, and at least for me, I'm really proud because the way that I did beating the guys that I beat, is I don't think it's going to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I beat two Hall of Fame guys to become the world champ. And, and so in the semis, you beat Cobrinha. Cobrinha. In, half a, in, the, in the final. In the final. <laughs> and... and if you watch the years, they dominated the division pretty much. One, one five times, the other one, one six times. And between that, that's why I beat them. Yeah, you know and I mean? so you went into those matches. How did you go into those matches with the mentality like, oh, I'm just, you went in there thinking, I'm going to beat these guys. Who, who kind of engraved that in your mind? Remember what you talk about the, the injury. So it was exactly a year before that. So when I started training again, and like I said, I I passed that process to understanding and, and accepting. I need to go through that. Okay, I, that is something bigger in the future for me, what it is. And in my mind, it was just the words coming. I said, I'm going to be a world champion in the black belt. Mm -hmm. So let's go through the process now. Let's physical therapy. Twice a day, I was going to physical therapy. Start training, start doing cardio, start doing everything, start training every competition to the world. I was not like I did before, like putting a lot of pressure, oh, I need to win, I need mm -hmm. to fight, I want to fight this guy or that. No, I said, man, that's going to be a preparation to me to get ready on the wards. On the wards, I'm going to get 100%. So okay. that's how you treated all those tournaments. Oh, yeah. Working out the kinks, and getting ready for worlds. If in, like I did four tournaments before the wards, big ones, right? So it was Europeans, I got second, so I lost to Cobrin in the final. Pan Ams, I got third. I lost to Cobrin again in the semifinal. Damn. World Pro, I was champion, and I beat Cobrin in the final. And uh, in the fourth one was uh, was the Worlds. So I was kind of, and that was the, the chronology of the, of the tournaments. Europeans, Pan, World Pro, and the Worlds. So I was just getting better and better, and that mm -hmm. was exactly my plan when I sat around the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. I said, man, I want to be 100% in June for the Worlds. So fighting Europeans now, 
Even I'm already training, I'm feeling good, but I, I know I'm not 100% yet. I just lost a year without training harder. And those guys were training for a full year, mm -hmm. competing, you know. So I know it takes me time to get there physically, technically, and um, mentally to, to, to go there and, and perform, you and know. And be ready to win. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucking awesome. I want to talk about this real quick, uh, yeah. the, the, crypto, the crypto crash here that we got going on. Dude, I bet so many people, Jay... Because I thought about, I mean, a couple, maybe a year or two years ago, but spending all my money and just buying a Bitcoin or two. When they were like 30000 I was like, it's just going to keep going up. But I bet you a lot of people, even when it was at fifty grand per Bitcoin, I bet you a lot of people bought it. Uh, and then yeah. it went up to sixty, sixty-five, and it starts climbing. And they're like, oh, we're going to get rich off this. And now it just tanked. It's about 30 something now, right? I think below. I think it's below. in the twenties. Whoa! And and Ethereum's were four thousand forty two hundred a coin at one point, so they're really high. Now they're almost dropping below a thousand. Well, they might might blow up again. I don't know. I'm mean, just in like future, so yeah. scared to to put my money on that. You know, like I'm. Yeah, uh, six months ago, seven months ago, I was like, wow. I'm a good investor. I'm the best <laughs> investor in life. And I'm like, fuck. Uh, it says, the past seven months have been bumpy for Bitcoin, and now it's crashing hard. After hitting an all-time peak of $69,000 per unit in November, the world's leading digital currency has since erased more than 67% of its value, sitting at just over $21,000 on Tuesday. Holdout investors who only a couple months ago may have thought they'd missed an opportunity of a lifetime are now sighing with relief. Meanwhile, those who bought in at peak are trying not to think about their losses. And what about Warren Buffett? What would the world's most famous investor say to those who might be thinking of firing up their investment apps and buying Bitcoin at bargain price? Buffett has made his share of extremely cutting remarks about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency over the years. He said, I don't have any Bitcoin. I don't own any cryptocurrency. I never will. It's probably rat poison. I saw that one, yeah. <laughs> rat poison squared. Here are the reasons you won't go near it. It has no unique eva value. The billionaire investor doesn't like Bitcoin because he considers it an unproductive asset. Buffett has well-known preference for stocks, corporations, blah, blah, blah. They don't produce. They can't mail you a check. They can't do anything. And what you hope is that somebody else comes along and pays you more money for them later on. But that person's got the big problem. He doesn't think crypto counts as money. Um, it does not meet the test of currency, the bill being said. It is not durable means of exchange. It's not a store value. Um yeah, I, I'm like, fuck. I mean, like any investment is risk, you know. Like yeah. I just, I just don't, I don't have that money that uh, I would be okay if I lose it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. A, right now, I said, no, I man. Like I'm, I mean, I'm working harder to make money and yeah. to, to make a future to my son. You know, mm -hmm. so I said, well, like I'm not putting five, ten thousand, twenty thousand in yeah. something that I don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, that that's gonna. Could could go well, but could go wrong. Yeah. Maybe if he, I was single, no family or whatever, I would say, oh, fuck, yeah, yeah. throw 10000 then and see what happens. That's like, it's just gambling. Yeah, kind of, yeah. I mean. But then Warren Buffett always says, and I kind of took it as advice on a lot of it, is just like invest in things that you use, like yeah. Apple or yeah. Tesla or things that you use, invest in those. And those can be a good long-term yeah. payout. Yeah, I, I don't understand much about all this stuff I need to study more. You know what I mean? I, I, I start talking to, to a financial ad advisor to kind of help me through those stuff to see what would be good investment. And he kind of said the same thing, you know, go through those companies that, uh, I mean, it's been a while, you know, it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it's kind of trying to use that to, to future investments. You know? yeah. But I mean, I just don't, I'm, I don't want to do like a lot of money in, in, in in those stuff, you know? Oh, I know. Well, so Theo's two and a half now. And, yeah. and most people, when they have a baby, they have family and family around. Yeah. Uh, they have the mom's parents, your parents. I mean, they have family. But raising a kid when it's just two, that's kind of what I'm battling with. I know I have a lot of people I trust and a lot of people that could like kind of help but i'm like it's just mariah and i my yeah. parents don't live here her parents don't live here we don't have a lot of like family here i mean in the I'm end like, it's fuck. gonna be you and her you know what i mean people yeah. are gonna say hey you're not gonna help you can leave him or her with me and do whatever but when you, when he's born you, you kind of 
know that he needs you. So you protect him. Say, oh, I trust that person, but if something goes wrong, what are they going to say? Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, sorry is not going to yeah. change or not. You yeah. know, like, so, I mean, it is really hard when you don't have a, um, a helper around, you know, mm -hmm. like a family or, or something, someone like to, to, like, that you truly, truly have a peace of mind yeah. to leave your son or daughter. So, I mean, it's, it's been a struggle for us, harder to, to maintain training and... Well, because like, Amanda's wanting to fight too, so she's training yeah. like pretty rigorously. You guys have to, the business, and you run all the books and at the business and stuff yeah, too. Yeah, I do which everything. Which is, fuck, which is a whole nother job in itself. It is. That's what Mariah and I are kind of battling with because her horses are finally starting to run like super fast. But we both know how much life is going to change when we decide to do it. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's going to change a lot, man. Fuck. But I don't regret. I mean, it's, it's amazing, amazing. It's just hard work. We need to do it. Like, last night, I, I mean, I had a final, like, good night sleeping, mm -hmm. almost like the eight hours straight without breaking. But the night before, I wake up, like, three times. Just because he's waking up? Or? He's waking up and, and he leaves his room, just call me, daddy, daddy, daddy. So I go there and just talk to him, hey, that's fine, go back to sleep. And he sleep for two more hours and wake up again, same thing. And so like, through the nights I go with three times. And that's, I mean, breaking my sleep and then seven in the morning I need to come up and, and go to academy and teach or yeah. clean or whatever I need to do. You know what I mean? And, and most of the time, I don't have time to nap during the day. Mm -hmm. So just at the end of the day, I'm exhausted, you know. But Do you guys talk to Theo in Portuguese? or We talk to him in Portuguese. I was with Portuguese since he was born. I mean, just really a few words in English. And, but everybody talked to him in English. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. He just he replies us in English. No, really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, he understands. I mean, you know, he started to say now uh, blue in Portuguese, which is azul. Mm -hmm. So he started saying azul now, but before it was just ball, uh, inchi, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whatever, car. So it's, fuck, it's just English. Daddy, mommy. That's funny. I said, oh, man, I don't know how you learned that, <laughs> but I guess, yeah. So who do you think is going to win the 66 kilogram division this, this come year in the fall? Man, I don't know. I, I, I would like to see the final list. I just saw, I think it was today or yesterday, Mo, the, the, the head uh, director for ATC, he said that he's going to announce today or tomorrow a big change on the 6-6. Six, six. I think someone from the 7-7 seven, seven is going down 6-6. Six, six. I wonder who. I wonder yeah, if that I was, can't uh, be Gary Tonin. Can no, it? I don't think he's Stoner. He's too big. I don't think he's Stoner, but I don't know who who's going to go there. He said it's a big name, so I... I mean, I was kind of thinking maybe Lapri, but I don't think if Lapri. Yeah, so is, this year it's Col Colabate, Gianni Grippo, Esteban Martinez. Damn, he got invited to no, it? it. No, I, think, I don't think he did it. Oh, is this a, this is a different one? Oh, this is the top names registered at the trials. Oh, okay, try, okay, yeah. okay. That was messed up. Yeah. Um, on 6-6. Six, six. Here's the official. Here we go. Uh, okay, we got the Ashley Williams, Colabate, Keith Kikorian. That kid's been doing good yeah. ever since you submitted him. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's getting better and better. He's been doing really good. Uh, then we got the Cobrinha's son, Kennedy, the Gabriel Souza kid. Mm -hmm. And then Josh Cesneros got in. Sweet. Josh Cesneros, yeah. He's a good style for you to see. Yeah. Diego Pata, Gio Martinez, Ethan Krillstein. But even the 77 kilograms, Jesus. JT Torres, Oliver T Taza, Tommy Langecker. Cade Rutolo, William Tackett, M Michael Golvo, uh, Roberto Mendez, or Jimenez, Lachlan Giles, Lucas Lepre, Davey Ramos, Nicky Ryan, yeah. Gary Tone, and Dante Leon, and Nato Canuto. Holy fuck. That's the most stacked one. Yeah. It's got to be like easy. Some of, someone there is going down 6-6. Six, six. I don't know who it is. And then, Can't be JT Torres. He's no, JT big. is not. For sure not. He's going to go to the third title for sure. Is it going to be the Galvo kid? Uh, Mika Galvon? Yeah. I don't think so. I don't think he's going to do that 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 cut. I mean, I mean Nicky Ryan, big. too. Nicky Ryan. Could he's be Nicky Ryan. To, Could be Nicky Ryan. I mean, he, Nicky Ryan was looking almost 200 pounds when I saw him. <laughs> yeah. He was huge. <laughs> Too much donuts. What about Canuto? Renato Canuto. I don't think Canuto goes down to. I mean, he's pretty, like, shredded already. 
It's one seventy, you know. So fuck, I don't know. Damn, Shanji Hiberio still yeah. stills in it. And, that, and he said he's gonna be the last one. Cause he's how old is he? Forty something, forty two or forty three. Yeah. Holy smokes! I mean, he was just find a way before me. <laughs> Man, imagine if we got to see like him versus uh, like Ty Rutolo or oh, something like that that'd be crazy and now lucas barbosa dropped down to 88 kilograms so that'll yeah, be interesting yeah that would be, be great for the six six i don't know maybe maybe i'll give a little bit of advantage through to cabrinha son yeah i think i mean he he gonna get more experience and 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 he has a good wrestling which helps a lot there all the other guns in the division doesn't have a a, a good wrestling mm-hmm. um I, th- I think he he, he might win he might win. Damn. So it's going to be interesting, too. In the 99 kilograms, Gordon Ryan's in the same division as, like, Nicky Rod, Nick Rodriguez. And for, like, those Rod brothers, they're such good wrestlers. They've been wrestling since they were little. And, and they train a lot set. together. Yeah. So let's see what happens. Because, I mean, some beef happened for sure. Mm-hmm. And or maybe they're just a marketing and they are not training or training. Yeah. I don't know. But it would be good to see. Yeah, I, I I think it's Gordon is, I mean he's really good, but he's, I think he's taking a big risk now, trying to kind of prove that he's the best, going to fight the division and going to fight the Galvan. Yeah, the super match. I mean, it's, well, especially for his style too, because it's not like Gordon's like this great wrestler. Yeah, and he's going against these guys that are good fucking wrestlers. So I'm curious to see how I, that goes. I'm just thinking about, I mean, the, not just one match. But like you're gonna do four match, and then then you're gonna get a, like a fresh Galvan coming to you. So right? he's gonna do he's gonna do his division first, and yeah. then the super fight with Galvan, which could last up forty minutes. Yeah, and fuck. The, and send something on his weight, you know, he, he can go final forty minutes again, and, <laughs> uh, and um, he's gonna fight Pena now in mm-hmm. a super fight, a submission only. So it would be, be good to see. I don't think Pena is a good shape now. Based on the super fight that he did in Brazil, he didn't look good, mm-hmm. and Gordon was kind of roasting him like bad because of that. But I mean, he's really good, so maybe he's had some problem before that he couldn't yeah. training and and I mean just went to there to the payday. Yeah, and now he's taking serious and and mm-hmm. so we, I think we're gonna find out before it's see you know. Yeah. Sweet. Well, that's perfect, dude. Thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Always. Guys, you can check. Uh, there's a ton more content on patreon.com slash Red Hawk Academy. We're doing a solo pod every week. Like this last week, Mariah and I did like a AMA, so ask us anything. And then we're putting up a bunch of content up there all the time, okay? So uh, thanks for my professor, Taquino, coming in. And uh, have a good week, guys. Thank you. I'm going to shuffle in. I'm going to throw a two, one, and I'm going to go over the top.